Hello, and welcome to Ponery's Penny Arcade. And if you're on the Eastern Hemisphere, Happy New Year. But I'm on the Western Hemisphere, so it's still New Year's Eve. Not that it matters, because, well, honestly, what do you have to look forward to? 2022, T-O-O, -O, most likely. Anyway, this is Call of Seregnar. And if you grew up in the 80s and 90s like I did, you probably played a game called Betrayal at Krondor. And playing this demo, the creators of this game obviously played Betrayal at Krondor and loved it because this game is that style, that engine, those graphics, everything polished and refined, plus P. Gun Guys knows what that means. But uh, yeah, this is a <clears throat> love letter to a game of 20, 30 years ago. And it's done brilliantly. It's currently available in a demo form, and if you'd like to get a copy for yourself, I'll leave you a link in the description below. I highly encourage you to play it, especially if you played Betrayal at Krondor, because this feels just like it. It even has, like, live actors who dress up in period-correct costumes and, you know, are used in still shots and whatnot. It's great, and you're about to see that. I think there's just enough content for me to show you a first 30 and a last 30. So this isn't going to be an extended playthrough. Uh, the one thing I've noticed is you can't save your game. So I played this yesterday for about an hour, and then I thought, okay, I'll just go to bed for the night. I'll get up and pick up where I left off. Well, this is where it left off, which means there's no load. But it is a demo, so it is what it is. And there's a lot to do in it, too, so you get to see quite a bit of the game. If I stop talking, that is. So let's go ahead and get started, because there's a little bit of a narration in the beginning that you probably want to hear. And then we'll go meet Dina, who's not unpleasant to look at, to be honest. Anyway, here we go. It was a late night in the small town of Romar. Hewan, an auspicious student of magic, and Sam, his roguish friend, decided to liven up the dullness of the road by spending the night drinking and gambling at the Utree Inn. After observing the two playing and winning a number of games against the locals, a gambler approached their table and challenged them to a game of Takla. It was then that fortune seemed to abandon them as the two friends lost most of their money and many valuables playing against the man. Sam was no stranger at cards and while he had no proof, Deep inside, he knew his opponent must have been cheating. At that point, the young rogue confronted the gambler, and in the struggle that ensued, an accusing card fell from the man's shirt. Oops. Realizing that he couldn't bluff his way out of the situation, the gambler felled Sam to the ground, grabbed the pouch of winnings, and dashed towards the exit. In the chaos, Huan tried to stop the retreating gambler, but only managed to trip on his friend and abruptly join him on the floor. Meanwhile, startled by the shouts in the common room, Dina, the owner of the tavern, dashed in and found the two youngsters lying atop one another, being the object of merriment of a drunken, cackling audience. Yeah, we got made fun of. So, what in Elmeris' name happened here? And where's that bloody gambler? He's yet to pay for the lodging and food gone. We caught him cheating at cards and he ran away. We tried. Gone? And why didn't you two go after him? Why didn't anyone go after him? The room fell silent as Dina's icy gaze traveled face to face across the room. Yeah, no one had the guts to get up. Propping himself upright, Sam assessed the condition of his bleeding nose by carefully bending it one way, then the other. Satisfied that it wasn't broken, he looked up at Dina, who stared at him with a mix of disbelief and rage. <coughs> I was gone for one minute, Sam. I know, but he had a third blue lady hard card hidden within his shirt. I knew he couldn't have been that good of a player. Not even gamblers of Barumus could have... Enough! He's gone because of you, and I don't want to hear any excuses. You'll be paying for both him and yourself. That man took the coin, Sam. Dina, I... He what? I'm, I'm sorry, what can I say? He must have taken our money after he bashed my nose in. I see. Then you either find your money and pay up, 
or you'll be playing here to cover the expenses every night for a week starting tomorrow. A week? Come on, that's unreasonable. I can't be stuck in this hole of a town for a whole week. And where are we going to sleep? Do we at least get a room to stay in? No, you don't. And since you can't afford staying, I suggest you start looking for the man now and closing for the night. Dina, sweetie, you can't be serious. It is the middle of the night. We'll never find him out here in the dark. Ah, you're right. Here, take these torches. You'll pay for them once you catch the gambler and get your money back. Good night. But Dina... Nope. <laughs> nope. Right out the door. So the first thing you're going to notice is... Uh, the inn is actually correctly named. And this does look a bit like Crondor. Smoother, though. See? I have a bad habit of jerking the mouse quickly, like this. So I apologize in advance for that. But it's going to happen. So anyway, we're outside the inn. She probably doesn't want to see us. We should probably wash our face. I should have known I was being cheated. Never lost that much money in one night. Or ever. Neither did I, Sam. We should have listened to Arthur while we had the chance. So you are these two characters. Twas your royal cousin's fault for buying us drinks in the first place, you know. You're drunk. As I recall, he wanted us all to go to his cellar. You know, the one with the wine and the dried meats. Well, now we have are these bland road rations, which I have no desire to eat ever again. Yes, yes, I get the point. Look, there's nothing we can do now but track down that man and recover my money. Our money. Yeah. Then we visit your cousin at that fancy manor home of his. You check out his book on magic tricks. We finally leave this accursed place. Deal? Damn it, Sam. That book is what got me traveling all the way up here in the first place. If it truly is an ancient book on magic like Arthur claims, it's a... Uh, it's like finding a damn treasure. I'd lose ten times the money I lost tonight for a chance to peek at its pages. Calm down, your magicianship. You'll get your chance, but first things first. Where do we start our search? That son of a whore could be anywhere right now. I don't know. We should probably find some place to spend the night, or camp out of town. No point in knocking on people's houses in the middle of the night. Sounds reasonable. But maybe someone's still up and saw something. Your call. So, wash your face. Now we look presentable. Now the problem is, is it's late at night. And you've only got four commands at your disposal. So M for map, which doesn't move, but it, it moves when you move. But there are a couple of points of interest, at least listed. And then there's J for journal. So every time something happens in the game, this will be added on top of your journal. And then you just pick up from there, so it kind of gives you an idea of what to do next. And then I think it's R for rest. The Lord will have our ears if we camp here. We should find a spot outside of town. If you hit R, it's a lot like Crondor. Let me see if I can go outside real quick and I'll show you. That's like the town marker here. So I think just outside of this is fine. But if you hit R... Nope. Okay, let's go a little further. So it plays like a first-person shooter. You just, you know, you spin with the mouse. You can hit shift or run. There it goes. Okay, so when you're outside of town like this, you can set the time that you rest. A lot like Crondor, actually. You can either set it... So this is the time we have currently. You can set it to here. And then you set hour, so it'll just sleep until this point, or daybreak, which I think will put you, like, here. Or until healed, so it'll just keep spinning around until, until you get to that point where your characters are healed. And then you have to keep an eye on your rations, just like Rondor. And then you have these options of cold camp. So, if you don't click these, you start a campfire and you sleep around the fire, right? Well, in the demo, I haven't run into anything yet to prove there's outside dangers. But later on, I suspect you'll have to set up cold camps and guard shifts <clears throat> because of, like, random attacks in the middle of the night. But for now, not necessary. There we go. 
pretty damn loud. All right, so let's go ask some questions. Actually, let me start here. Let's take a look inside an abandoned house. Sure. Save for a broken chair and some pieces of pottery scattered on the floor, the house was remarkably empty. This place was looted clean, said Hewan, kicking at the debris. Sam, however, was kneeling and examining the section of the floor with interest. He slid his fingers along the edge of a wooden board, and as expected, the board gave way. Aha! he exclaimed triumphantly. Lifting the piece of timber, he discovered a small jingly pouch hidden within. Of course it takes a thief. So, these are your coins here. There's three types, which kind of reminds me of World of Warcraft, I think, right? There's copper, silver, and gold. So in this game, it's uh, Savion, which is gold, and then Ocean, which is silver, and Leshen, which is like bronze. So it's 10 of the lowest one to get the middle one, 10 of the middle one to get the highest one, essentially. So this is like four copper, basically. <laughs> And for the money, it doesn't matter who you drag it over to, because it's your collective money. So, we can start asking questions. Let's go over here, knock on the door. They knocked and waited. Outside of the little house came a heavyset man, his receding hair betraying his age. He leaned against the door frame, looked at them impatiently. Yes? What do you want? It was Hewan who spoke. Excuse us, but we're looking for a man who stayed at the inn, a gambler. I don't know his name, but he did leave in a hurry not too long ago. The man took a long look at the two and said, Yes, in fact, I did see someone, though. I haven't seen his face. I just got up to take a piss, and when someone ran past me like his boots were on fire. He went Brighton. Did you see where he went? South. Out of town, I guess. Now, if you excuse me, I've got things to attend to, the man said, and disappeared into his home. I don't know, maybe take a piss? <laughs> Alright, so, journal updated. Saw the man flee south in the middle of the night. This must be our man, so that way. This is a resale shop, but we're Poe. And to be honest, I didn't check out all the rest of these houses until after I did this one quest mission type thing. So I'm going to save it for later. Because there is something kind of useful here in town. Content-wise. So anyway, we're going to head south. And the first thing you're going to notice is everything is smooth and fluid. Krondor was very pluck, pluck plot choppy and you take a step and you would jump like five steps forward or whatever but I mean let's be honest that was a much older graphics engine I think it actually used the engine from Aces of the Pacific or something like that which is pretty amazing because a role-playing game and they used a, a flight simulator engine essentially so here Sam was glad of the drinking post the king had erected throughout the kingdom they were assigned that the water was clean and safe to drink so you don't get to take the cups, obviously. It's like a public service water fountain. So I'm not going to run. Just so you can kind of soak it all in. Now one thing I did find kind of funny. If I walk up to this tree, right? Look, it's kind of flat. But if I walk around in circles like this, it keeps the flat surface always facing you. It's kind of a throwback texture thing, but it's funny. Anyway, see? It just keeps following you. <laughs> Love it. So, even in the demo, you are encouraged to sort of explore. Because you'll find, like, these treasure chests, which should feel pretty familiar to you if you played Condor. <laughs> now, I did not walk this way before. I'm doing this now for the first time. But I already saw one right there. It was no ordinary chest. Examining the massive iron-bound box, Hugh inspired the brass plate on the front. Curiously enough, a riddle was inscribed on it. Most probably, in case the owner forgot the combination. Whatever the reason, the curiosity to see what the chest held inside quickly took over, and he began pondering on the word that would open the tightly sealed lid. So we have... Look familiar? Yeah. One holds me with prowess, one holds me with fear. That, most often not, is a matter of skill. Okay, now I haven't opened this one before. Hmm. Sword? Cool. 
Ooh, and we got a sword. Okay, so... 10 strength, 9 skill. This is a short sword, so we're going to give it to our swordsman. And then go to inventory, I. Now, I'm carrying a falcon. It's 9 and 6, so obviously this is going to be better. And it's in better condition. And notice neither one of us have armor. Okay. So, I'm going to keep going this way just to see where this takes us. Okay, I see how this works. It's all connected. Up there is this. The temple. We will get to that eventually. Let me backtrack just a little bit. I think we passed a farmhouse. Yeah. Here we go. I already tried walking up to the farm for lootables. There's nothing... If there's something that can be interacted with, if you notice my crosshair's got like a, a an empty spot in the middle, when you come up to something usable, it will fill in to let you know, hey, you can interact with this, which that's none of this. But if I go to the door here, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. See how it fills in? They knocked and waited. After several minutes passed, Sam leaned into the door frame to listen if anything was stirring within the house. I can't hear any with anyone within. Let's just go. Fine. Alright. Let's go wander over to this here temple. The first thing I did when I check the temple was I walked around it. You know, exploration. Wash our face. Always got to be presentable. Just a couple extra stones. And then, what is this? These are really old Yemai stones. Yemai? Sounds kind of Hawaiian, isn't it? Yemai. Yemai stones are apparently these stones that are on top of graves. This is a really old grave. Okay, this one's covered. These are really old Yemai stones. Okay. And then I looked over here, and there's a cemetery. See? These have markings on them. Nothing particular about this one. This is a really old grave. This one wouldn't let me click. See, I can click the headstones here. But not this one. But I can click this. Fresh bouquet of flowers rested on the finely chiseled middle slab. Looks like a fairly expensive Yemai. Someone wanted to be extra sure their beloved one stays within the boundaries of the stones. Or finds the way back. Either way, we should be going. So there's, there's some, like, spirituality references in here. So, like, your rogue thinks that these stones are there to keep the body in the ground. Whereas your magician thinks <clears throat> it's like a marker in case you get to come back. Really old grave. <clears throat> this grave was old. If there was a name engraved on the Amai, it has been washed away by decades. Only a sun-like symbol was visible on the headstone, most likely due to the depth it was chiseled in when it was made. So this is probably the oldest uh, grave on the property. <clears throat> I think that's the last one, too. Yeah. Alright, let's go over to the temple. I will start by talking to this guy. He was lost in thought. After exchanging a few words with the man, Hewan learned his name was Nomau, and that he was a farmer from the outskirts of Romar. Remember that house we were at earlier? He told him that his wife disappeared two weeks ago, after going to fetch some water from the river. He's been praying to Ter Terry Nan, or is it Ier Inan? Maybe it's Ter Tenan. I don't know. You guys decide. So she may return safely home again. No one's found any trace of her. He told you, and the whole village joined the search. Even Lord Longcoast's dogs couldn't catch her scent. She simply vanished the man said, bursting into tears. 
He even stayed for a while longer consoling the man as best as he knew. Then he excused himself and returned to Sam. His wife vanished, no trace of her anywhere. Maybe she just left him. No, I don't believe that's the case. The whole thing feels wrong. Sam shrugged. If you click him again, it doesn't do anything. It just says, let's leave him alone. The scent was familiar. While it eluded him at first, it took a long moment for Hewan to realize that what he'd smelled was an herb he last handled at the University of Magic in Indara. Due to its innumerable curative and mystical properties, the relatively rare Ormanis was sought after by both healers and practitioners of magic, and therefore it often commanded high prices on the market. Hewan remembered now. In his first year of study, Mage Farron lashed out at him for using the whole plant in an experiment. Snapping out of his reverie, Hewan realized he must have been staring at the young woman for the, long, for the whole time. Thankfully, if he was to judge from her expression, she wasn't as much annoyed as she was amused. Please excuse me, I didn't mean to stare, but the bundle of Ormanis you're carrying brought back memories. Are you by chance willing to sell some? I could surely make good use of it in our travels. Habebe. I'm sorry, but I swore an oath to see it delivered to the priests of Hualia. But why the interest, if I may ask? An herbalist, perhaps? Can't say I often run into those who would have heard or who would have heard of, let alone know the herb. No, I'm not an herbalist, but I have studied about them in Andara, so I can make use of most if need be. Besides that the unique properties of herbs always fascinated me, so I try to learn of them whenever I can. This dude's like, hi, baby. <laughs> I see. It's good to meet someone with a keen eye for herbs. If you're in need to purchase some, though, you're welcome to my shop, Nature's Gifts in Urgenden. My name's Lynn. I'll be sure to give you a fair price if you visit. Mm-hmm. Thank you for the offer, Lynn. If the road ever takes us to Urgenden, We'll be sure to stop by. I know, and I'm Hewan. It's been a real pleasure meeting you. Yeah, I bet it is. The pleasure was all mine. So it's mutual! <laughs> I thought the Temple of Our Luck Goddess was far off in Ingaroth. Are you planning to travel there all by yourself? Surely a courier could safely deliver those herbs in your stead. You'd think that wouldn't... Or, you think that would have been the soundest choice. But it's been weeks since I last saw a courier carriage pass through Urgenden. It's like our little village suddenly gone off the map. Meanwhile, I pray to the god of travelers for good fortune. I was assured the courier still passes through there, so it shouldn't be long before I return to my shop. Goodbye, Lin. Yeah, I'll go here now. Servant begging for them to sit. The high priestess is currently in prayer, so if you would be so kind to wait, I'll let her know of your presence. Time dragged by, especially for Sam, who was now nervously pacing up and down the hall, stopping at the door several times, listening for whatever was happening beyond that boundary into the holy realm that only priests had access to. This is maddening, he said while descending a few steps into the Ismente. But as soon as he touched the last step, the large door opened and a tall woman wearing priestly garments stepped through. To those present, she bowed her head, then smiled at Sam. I'm sorry if the wait has caused you any grief. Our god has been restless recently, and relies on our priestly chants. Hewan stood up, and Sam tried to say something, but words eluded him, so he cast his gaze downward in silence. It was Hewan who addressed the holy woman. We apologize, High Priestess. There is no dire need for our visit. We simply wanted her to talk. We can talk, she replied, her eyes lined with weariness, but let us be quick, as I have other matters to attend to. During the session with the Priestess of Ter, I guess it's Ter Tanan. That's what I'm going to go with. They touched many topics about the god himself, but they also discussed recent events that have befallen them, including the matter with the gambler. The balance of power is being tipped over. Like I've said before, oh, yeah, like I've said it before, our god is troubled, and we've received note of similar disruptions from other temples as well, said the priestess gravely. You should be wary on your travels, particularly you, Huin. For I feel you are embarking on a journey much longer than you had planned for. The priestess seemed to contemplate something, then she spoke to Sam. Within you I can feel a similar disturbance, but much alike to the one that has affected our temple home. But it is early to guess the nature of it. Time will tell. 
Lastly, she took their hands and said, Look out for each other, for I see danger on your way. She then excused herself and bid them farewell. I really don't like that woman, you. I felt like she looked right through me. I got goosebumps all over. Yes, I felt it too, but she is a high priestess after all. Those close to the gods often possess special talents. Yeah, talents to make one shit his pants. Let's go. I don't want to stay here a moment longer. So, we met Lin, and then we got spooked. The priestess of Teratanan one warned us of the danger, or some danger on our way, but I also scared the shit out of Sam. I never thought I'd see that day coming. <laughs> Alright. So, now we have new journal entries. We've already searched all this. So, onward! Hello? They were invited into the small house. After explaining they were travelers on their way to Avonmore, Ranamid, the head of the farmer family, offered him a place to sit at their fire pit. We were just about to have breakfast, he said, <clears throat> or said his wife, and then added, Ter Tanan has been generous this year, so food is plentiful. We'll be happy to share. Hewan welcomed the warm food he'd been given, and Sam readily emptied his plate. It would be nice to hear news from the outside, Ranamid said, between one mouthful and the next. We used to have visitors here now and then, but these days they rarely stop to have a chat. Everyone seems to be in a hurry. Hewan spent a good part of the hour recounting what he knew, and whenever the story got too dull to Sam's liking, the light-haired rogue promptly added all sorts of embellishments to the tale. He even sung one of his songs, which amused Sarah, Ranamid's wife, to no end. When they were done, Sarah addressed Sam. Now that was quite a tale. Next time you visit Romar, I'd love to hear you sing another one. Sam accepted the compliment with a broad smile, and together with Hewan, they rose and thanked them for their hospitality. As they walked towards the door, Randomir said, Good luck on your travels, boys. If you haven't been to our temple, you should really do so. Perhaps talk to the priestess while you're there. Thank you, Randomir. We already spoke to the priestess already. And t'was a most unnerving experience, Sam added, shuddering at the thought of the encounter. Again, they thanked for them the hospitality, and they left. Free food! Not bad. <clears throat> Nice folks. Let's get a move on. There's a house way off in the distance. Kind of away from everything. Off the beaten path, too. So before I go after the house, let's go look around. Let's like poke around the perimeter here. Looks like it used to be a farm. I don't think I can look through windows. Yeah. Oh, it's early evening too. What do we got here? Strange. A grave outside the temple grounds. Uh-huh. Let's check out the house. The door was ajar. No, the door is a door. It's an old joke. Signaling for silence, Hewan crept towards the house and carefully peeked through the gap. The inside was dark and quiet, with pieces of furniture scattered about and nothing of any real value in sight. No one seemed to have been living here for some time. Still careful not to divulge their presence to whoever might be listening, he slowly pushed the door inward, and the old door protested with a loud groan. There goes our silent approach, shall we? He went offered opening the door fully, but as soon as he took a step in, a deathly stench invaded his nostrils and he fought the urge to throw up. Lying in the corner, face down in the ashes of the fire pit, was a man, his clothes bloodied and soiled. His back was pierced by an iron rod, probably a fire iron, and two of the man's fingers had been cut off and cast it into the pit. Is that our man? asked Sam, with his mouth and nose covering his sleeve. Hewan nodded. I think so. At that point, Sam pushed past him and took a closer look at the body. It is him, he said, but there's no money on the body whatsoever. Whoever did this picked him clean. Suddenly, the sound of a sword leaving its scabbard came from the outside, and a rough male voice announced, You two, drop your weapons on the ground and walk out, slowly. 
Hewan turned towards the door, taking a step back, and Sam straightened, instinctively going for his weapons. As if making a point, a second sound followed, a crossbow string being drawn and locking. I think what I'll do is I'm going to end the episode here and try to drag this into a small series for you. So this was... Call of Seringar. Sorry, a brain fart. I'm trying to keep my dog quiet. <laughs> this is the demo to Call of Seringar, and if you'd like to see more of this game or like to play for you for yourself, the demo is a free download on Steam. Check the link in the description below. If you're new to my channel, welcome, but if you're a regular here, welcome back. Either way, maybe check out my other playlist to see if my other interest might be of interest to you. There will be more episodes, I promise. I'm not sure how many. Maybe I'll be able to stretch it to five. Maybe. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one. Later.